going on everybody let's just jump straight into this per usual this is your weekly update and right now you're probably wondering why do I have these three images on this chart right here and I think it's appropriate to really just outline what is the vibe of the market right now and I think the best way to describe the market right now is to describe it in a way that would vibe well with a Jimmy Buffett song maybe like a Margaritaville or something like that because that is really what it's going on right now in the market we are in a seasonally low volatility um, chill time and this is um, very normal for this time of year a lot of traders are going to be on vacation over the next few weeks and potentially months and that's exactly how it has been really over the last few years now that doesn't mean that we don't have trading opportunities and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay attention it's not good to be on the beach drinking you know four deep in mojitos or margaritas and then look at your phone and the market has moved 10 percent right that might not be a great thing for some traders but it probably will happen i do think there will be some movement this summer i just don't think that it's going to be enough to break us out of the current range that we are establishing right now and we're going to talk a little bit about that let's talk a little bit about what happened last summer because i think this is probably a pretty good example of what we could see now you know they say history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes and i'm not saying that it's going to repeat itself perfectly like last summer but i think it definitely could rhyme if we look last summer we established a roughly 20 point range okay if you look at the current range that we have established so far about a 20 point range and there's really this is not coincidental this is very similar where we had a very nice move um, earlier in the year after this really a black swan event this was the regional banking crisis the silicon valley banking crisis and we ended up getting up to a really strong level of resistance and it was a seasonally low volatility low volume uh, part of the year you weren't ever going to break this 30k you really need significant volume to do this and this is just not the time of year that that is likely to happen doesn't mean that it can't happen but as a trader you have to think about things in probabilities right what is the probability that this would happen and right now we are in a very similar uh, similar simu simulation or sorry <laughs> situation where it is not very likely that you are going to break all-time high over the next few weeks but where are we at as in today because there are some things we can look at in terms of the lower time frame microstructure we're going to pull out a couple of tools we're not going to spend that much time on ta here i just want to just kind of give a rough over overview of where we are today okay so if we pull up our volume profile you can see that we have a nice distribution that is occurring right here this is a range and the middle of this range okay it's sort of like a magnet okay it's sort of like a magnet and once you get outside of this distribution this is called a value area low this is called a value area high once you get outside of these two points price will unravel pretty quickly in the op in the outside as it's going down this is like a magnet this center point which is called the point of control this really doesn't have a true point of control it has like two of them but we'll just treat this as kind of the point of control um, as it breaks down you can see things got pretty ugly but we came right back above it so this is really like a magnet this range especially when you don't have a lot of volume or narrative to push you outside of balance and this is very typical of summer if we look at a seasonality chart hopefully you can see this right here you can see that the first few months um, or I guess where we are now which is like roughly quarter two is sort of sideways right you see this right here this is like June or this is getting into July right here and this is like May right that's a sideways market so this is going back 20 years this is typically how the market behaves from a seasonality standpoint and you can see that the end of the year so you know like November December October typically are you see a lot bigger moves specifically to the upside and specifically if you look at an election year which is a whole nother uh, data point to look at so you have to have that in the back of your mind I think when you're swing trading 
um, and definitely day trading because this market is just not going to want to go anywhere unless you have compelling information to change kind of like this robotic seasonality that that these algorithms and these you know these algorithmic traders these prop firms these hedge funds are going to just naturally um, they're going to naturally trade and in, in, in with that in the background so it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy right there's no narrative really other than uh, inflation might be coming down maybe it's going up we don't really know so seasonality is really kind of the compelling sort of um, limiting factor if you will now if we take a look at the economic data our economic calendar that we like to look at um, day to day we can see that there's really nothing going on this week in terms of important new uh, economic data whether that's like FOMC or CPI or you know unemployment data you, you don't have anything out this week really that matters the only thing that might really move the needle is as we get into Thursday you have US unemployment claims and we also have this inflation expectation consumer sentiment that comes out on Friday okay so it's pretty clear to me that the first part of this week it's just gonna be a wash maybe maybe you you're able to have a couple of trend days like you had today I'm doubting it but I think you will start to see the market get pretty choppy as you approach this US unemployment claims and also this inflation expectation next week is really what's going to be very important and this is why this kind of further further confluence in this idea that the market's really not going to want to do a lot minus an exogenous change in our you know in the risk vectors that are currently present right like if there's like a nuclear war that starts okay you can just throw this entire model out the window <laughs> right um, that kind of goes without saying but next Wednesday is likely in my opinion going to be the factor that could break us either lower out of the range that we're currently in or higher it has the potential okay so next Wednesday is going to be very important you're likely to see volatility um, a lot of chop but maybe increasing volatility as you approach that day during that day and probably I don't want to say volatility depends on the outcome but movement after we we'll to say movement okay after that day so chop is really the vibe here you know from a day trading perspective you know you can get by on this I would say this week in particular is probably one of the better weeks weeks to take off in terms of like active day trading day to day especially crypto okay especially crypto because the the fees to get into a position and you know out of a position are it overwrites really the incentive um, to day trade when there's not a lot of volatility if you get it if you have to exit a trade a few times um, it's just not worth it at that point because of the slippage and the fees that are in the crypto markets okay so I don't recommend people trade Bitcoin day to day really oftentimes now at all maybe swing trading it um, but day trading is not really a great there, there are better instruments to trade like the S&P 500's futures contract for example over Bitcoin due to the increased liquidity um, and lower fees one of the things I do want to talk about today is the US Fed balance sheet so we had the FOMC last week and a lot of you know a lot of the gibberish that you typically hear during the FOMC uh, was repeated but there was one thing in particular that did I don't want to say it like surprised the market but you did have a greater than expected tapering okay of QT what does that mean well now the Fed is taking things off its balance sheet slower at a, at a slower pace than it was and it's it told the market that it actually is going to reduce it even lower than they expected in the short term now at some point there will be no QT at all and this is going to be very very important um, going forward because a lot of traders or I should say a lot of macro analysts which we're not going to claim that we are like this, these expert macro analysts here um, I actually kind of find that insulting because I think most of it is gibberish and useless but you want to know macro insofar as that macro variable affects global liquidity a lot of macro talk is irrelevant from my experience however something like the Fed balance sheet is definitely important at one point in time people believed that the Fed balance sheet had to go up for markets to go up but as you can see 
the Fed balance sheet has been slowly going down, albeit going down, and yet the markets have been going up during this period. So this is something the market did not believe was possible. If you told people in 2022 that, hey, if the, we're, we're, we're going to see QT, the Fed balance sheet's going to go down from this point forward, almost no one would have believed you if you told them that you would be at all-time highs in 2023, or early 2024, rather. They would have thought that's crazy. But the market proved that actually the market can go up with a decreasing balance sheet. Now, this was accomplished through some clever things that the Treasury and the Fed did. Um, for one, the Treasury or the, the Fed created the BTFP, which was a short term loan program for underwater banks, specifically regional banks. And that helped with liquidity in the markets. And then you had the, tre uh, the, the Treasury that was draining, you know, certain accounts that it had, uh, that, it, that it was able to drain to help the situation with, with liquidity. So that's been the story on, that's really the factors that have allowed the markets to, to actually be, you know, go up and not have much volatility over the last two years. And again, we're going to be watching this chart very closely because it's kind of obvious to me that as we go back into QE, which is likely to be the case, I think, as we go into the end of the year or next year, that's going to provide probably, or you know, most likely, a pretty significant boost to markets. Okay, and this is why I think Q4 of this year will be particularly interesting because that's when the Fed allegedly will start lowering rates according to your, you know, who you want to listen to. Some people will say, oh, they're not going to lower rates at all this year. Some people will say, oh, they're going to have to. It seems like, it naturally seems that they're going to need to start doing that, or at minimum, completely into QT by 2025. That's just my personal opinion, not a macro expert. That's just, it seems kind of like common sense. And this has a lot to do with really the debt. The U.S. has an enormous amount of debt, and at some point it has to service that debt. And the United States does not make enough money to pay for all of its liabilities. It has to create money to pay for the things it needs to. As you can see, we've had a drop in U.S. dollar liquidity. So this is specific to the U.S. dollar, obviously. And this was to be expected. So a lot of really good analysts expected this to happen. And this is mainly due to really tax season. Okay, so tax season typically um, will cause some issues for global liquidity for markets. Okay, and you have the, and this is directly related to this, but you have the TGA account that is being refilled. And it could reach you know, up to a, a trillion dollars, something like that, as of, as of projected right now. Well, that's not great for global liquidity in the short term, but this certainly is not like, you know, detrimental in the longer term. This is kind of just short term roadblocks. So we are bullish going forward. But as we talked about earlier, we do expect for there to be the Jimmy Buffett, chill on the beach kind of vibes for the market. Slow, maybe not even, I wouldn't say volatile, um, at all, just kind of sideways, choppy, waiting for narratives, waiting for data, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's very typical for this time of year. Now, let's talk about something maybe a little bit more interesting, and that is meme coins. So we've been talking a lot about meme coins in the Discord, and if you know my take on meme coins, I don't, look, I'm not the guy here to tell you that, hey, meme coins have this intrinsic value and like they're great investments. I wouldn't say that, but it would be very dumb to say that they haven't been great trading opportunities for traders who know what they're doing. They're getting tremendous amounts of volume. They have the best looking charts of any sector in crypto. And that's just not something you can you can look past. I mean, as, as, a, as someone that works that trades in this industry, you have to pay attention to where is the liquidity coming how can I capitalize on that, right? So if we look at Pepe here, all right, if you don't know what that is, again, that's a meme coin. We can see that it has a really, really nice chart here. You have made a higher low from the low that we had a few weeks ago, and now it's just kind of chopping around near this resistance level here. This is to be expected. If we do not break this resistance level in the short term, which is what it's looking like, I would expect to get some sort of retest close to this POC node here, but this is a level that you would want to hold. You would not want to get below the, the value area low of this of this market structure here. Okay, why? Because you're likely to test lower levels, 
and this thing could be quite volatile. So this is not something I reckon, it's not financial advice, by the way. I'm just saying this is something that is very volatile. Like even just a basic move to this POC, which is like to be expected really, is 10%. So these things move a lot when they're just chopping around. If you're interested you know, in picking up a position, I would say this is a good place to monitor to see, hey, what does the volume look like here? Are we getting some absorption? Are there buyers stepping in here? That's what I will be looking for if we get somewhere in this box. Not going to be too picky, but like I said, I want to see the reaction. I want to see the reaction from buyers if price is somewhere in this box. And we can see that this is really the case for everything interesting right now. They all have the same accumulation structure, meaning we had this big rip up, big move down, and now it's just kind of doing this summer Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville thing where it's just kind of going sideways, but you're getting very constructive price action. We had this big washout here. We took out all of the, much of the leverage, the people who, you know, were getting greedy and you got rid of the weak hands. That's always a good thing in my opinion. And now we're creating this higher low here. Now you want to keep, like I said, you really want to hold this higher low. You want to see buyers somewhere in this box. If you get below here, you know, that wouldn't be a great thing in the short term. You'd probably see this gap here filled out. And that's definitely reasonable if Bitcoin isn't able to hold its current level or its current range right now. We've talked a lot about near in the Discord, and I think it's fairly obvious why. It just has this beautiful accumulation structure. Currently, it's at a high, again, near Pepe, um, Bonk, all similar charts. But the, different, the difference with near is that it's, it's not a meme coin. This is actually a, a fairly serious project and they have quite a bit of things going on this year. And I think that's the reason why the chart looks so good. It has several updates, things to talk about, potential narratives um, that the market is trying to get ahead of, in my opinion. Similar situation with Bonk and Pepe that you want to hold this box, you wanna hold this POC here, or if you get under it, at, at least you wanna get back to it you don't want to get under this box, under this POC, and, and start to get lower for very long. Why? Because you're probably going to test lower levels. And again, these things are very volatile, and that move can be pretty significant. So we really want to hold somewhere in here. Okay, you, you, We want to create higher lows, uh, maintain this bullish structure that we have. We've talked a lot about this Popcat coin, which is hilarious. I know what you might be thinking. That's just such a goofy meme. But the reality is this actually looks pretty darn good on a chart. So if we, if, we, if we pull up Popcat, or actually, it's not that it looks good on a chart. It's just it reminds me of some of these meme coins um, that are now currently in the billions of market cap. It reminds me of them before they got into the billions of market cap category. And we can see that this is a fairly new chart here, or a fairly new coin, meme coin, really being created somewhere in December of last year. It's had a pretty nice move up. But I wanna show you why I think this could be an interesting meme coin going into the next few months. One of the big meme coins, and I've we've talked about this a lot in the Discord and, and in other daily update videos, we can see that Bonk is a meme coin. It has a $1.6 billion market cap. Now keep that number in your head. It's fully diluted value, which is really what we should be looking at, is about $2 billion. So keep that $2.3 billion number in your head. If we look at another meme coin that's done really well over the last year or so, Pepe, $3.5 billion market cap. About another, so dog with hat. A goofy meme coin, $3.3 billion market cap. Okay, we can just go on and on and on here. Okay, let's go to some of the OGs, right? Dogecoin, $22 billion market cap. Yes, you heard that correctly. Shiba, okay, $23 billion fully diluted value. And now let's look at Popcat, $500 million. So this thing is significantly smaller than every single meme coin I just showed you. If it gets popular even a little bit, it's not hard to see how this could go to 1.5, which is a, you know where Bonk is, and I think Dog with Hatch or whatever is like, like three or something like that, right? 
you don't have to use much imagination to see if this meme takes off. It could go up a lot, right? Obviously, that's not financial advice. But when it comes to these memes, you have to think about where is it at market cap wise, and what is you know what is the going rate for some of these memes that have been successful. Okay, this is a very slow week, so this video doesn't have to be that big. If you want to hear more stuff on it, you know, from a day to day basis. I really encourage you guys and gals to join us in the Discord where we talk about this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, talk about live trading and other things like that. We hope to see you there. And until next time, happy hunting, friends. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you'd like more updates like this. And let us know in the comments, what do you think about today's video and Defiancy update and insight? Also, make sure that you join our Discord, our free community chat where we discuss things like this, what's going on in real time. Typically, our Discord community is the first to know what's happening. We would love to see you there. Check the link in the description. And until then, we'll see you in the next Defiancy Insight video. Bye for now.